the left, the right. Clear prop. 1001, 1002. Centered line good. Power. And please pump off. <coughs> I like to double check everything. Have a little fog this morning. I'm trying uh, having a mic. I'm not going to go too far. It's a little foggy south, but actually, I'm just going to stay east. Hang out around here. Slowly burn it off. <clears throat> yeah, so I figured I'd try to see how Mike works. Flying. Obviously, it's not the greatest morning. I'm uh, kind of doing this for myself too. I'd love someday to instruct. So, seeing if I listen back to it and. Uh, as I'm explaining things to see if it sounds like somebody could understand it. I'm just going to do a few touch and goes here. Uh, this is a really small airport and there's not a whole lot of traffic. Uh, so if I'm just buzzing right around here, I usually uh, don't announce every little thing. So this would be runway 18, it's this 1836 here, it's a 2,000 foot runway, I'm using my four flight Hawk right in front of me. Oh, and throttle. I love the chute, I can really control the chute. I'm slowed that ground speed down to about 18 knots. And there's no wind at the surface. So I'll show the difference without flare and flying straight, same direction. I'm flying uh, 29 knots, no flare. So just with that flare, I'm able to get my speed down, way down to 18 knots easy. I learned my lesson about going up in, in the fog. I won't do that again. This would be 3-6. Got a few roads right here. Usually whenever people are landing, there's always cars coming by watching. And this will be 3-6. So this is an old, old airport. You see I'm going a little faster this way. I've got tailwind. to just hover right above stay center very simple to fly this little inputs with the feet little inputs with the throttle this is a hundred horsepower Rotex so it is very powerful and especially when I'm flying by myself uh, it's it's it is really nice. I could get out of, if I got a shrunk down draft or power is really great. I come out here and I practice all the time, just running up and down the runway, staying center. I'll purposely come in this way if I've got some mechanical rotors coming off the trees just to just to practice getting used to that 
uh, practice flying low with throttle, pra practice flying low with just flare. So yeah, you could do it both. You don't need, you can fly low with flare or you can fly low with throttle. Really the combination of the two. Now you need to be careful with the flare because you add too much flare and when you release you're going to drop and then you'll hit the ground. Boost there. The farmer does let me fly here. Uh, first time I was flying around low here, he, uh, well not the first time, but one of the times he came over and he, uh, oh boy, what was he going to say, you know, don't fly low in my fields. <laughs> and he said, can you take a gun up with you and shoot those groundhogs? No, I can't bring a gun up here with me, but I could scare him for you. There's a farmer around here who will pay kids a few dollars for a groundhog, a dead groundhog. When you, when you go up around here, you look up, there's groundhog holes all over the place. <clears throat> Wait for this fog just to burn off a little bit, hang around here, and then we'll head south for a little while. So right here, we're in South Jersey. Uh, to get to the Delaware Bay, it's about, uh, I'd say, 15 miles south. To get kind of to the Delaware River, heading over to Delaware, head west. It's about another 15 miles. And to get to the Ocean City or Atlantic City, it's about 30 miles away to the east. So a lot of traffic around here. You got Philadelphia Airport is 26 miles to the north. We got Atlantic City to the west. We have Dover Air Force Base. Uh, or no, Atlantic City's to the east, Dover Air Force Base to the west. Is that what I said? And we'll get a lot of traffic, uh, military traffic going from Dover to McGuire or Lakehurst, and they fly right over this airport at low, low altitude, high speed. So you need to be careful and looking out for that. I'm using my Ford flight, and it uh, announces to me every time I'm going in and out of the runway. You know, this never gets old. Just zipping around low like this, I really enjoy it. about two feet off the top of the corner right now. And as the surface starts to warm up, it's going to push me up. And you kind of can't fight it too much or overcompensate with throttle, like reduce your throttle, because it's only going to last a little bit. So I like to just, if it pushes me up, I just kind of go with it, like right there. And eventually settle back down. Now the winds are going to pick up a little bit. They were variable even from when I took off till now. I'd say it's a, it was calm at the surface. It's about five knots right now. I put up a more sensitive windsock at the airport. Uh, if you look, look straight ahead, there's a windsock right there. I don't know if you can see it on the gray building. That's hardly moving and it's really kind of, to me, it's too low and too close to the buildings. I don't know if you got winds coming from the east or how much of an accurate reading. But here's my windsock right there. You can see that. <clears throat> a little bit more out in the middle of the field. 
and it's an eight knot windsock, so a little bit more sensitive. Actually, a lot of the other pilots, a lot of them said that they will use that windsock now. And where my hanger is, you can't see it. <coughs> you can't see the original one. So it's nice, if I'm waiting for things to die down, I can just sit over in that area and find my hanger and keep an eye on the windsock without having to go walk around the building. Let's go up a little bit and see how the fog's doing. Oh yeah. Getting a little bit more visibility now. I'm usually the only one out here. Misty, hazy layer. Kind of in it right now. Still, I mean, I got pretty good visibility. I can see out a good eight miles. I don't know how it looks on the camera. It is neat once you kind of bust above that, it clears up real nice. Well, you can really see in the horizon that where that haze layer is. Yeah, good visibility. Warming up, too. So in the morning, we have what's called a cold air inversion. And it'll be cooler at the surface. And the higher you go up, it gets some warm up here. Here we go. we got a nice right over our that's a pretty cool shot looking at that yeah once that sun comes up too it's gonna burn off that fall yeah nice and clear Ah, uh, this is 700 feet. So with a lot of the traffic out here, I like to fly uh, usually 500 to 1,000 feet. I actually, I'm in the mode C veil, and uh, I do not have a transponder. So I've talked with uh, Philadelphia and Atlantic City, and I stay below 15 feet while I'm in the Red Sea. They've been really good uh, working with me. They're trying to get me a letter so I don't have to call all the time. But uh, right now this works. And I really wouldn't be up flying high here anyway. It's too much traffic. So it really smoothed out up here, nice. Now you can't really see the bay yet. So because these fly so slow, when I'm planning a trip, I always think about the winds and the ground speed. Uh, only flies 30 knots true airspeed all the time. So uh, because of that going so slow, you could start off and have a tailwind and say, oh man, I'm flying fast. Man, you can fly for a good 40 minutes and get yourself way far away. And then when you turn around to come back, you're hardly moving. It's 
So with a uh, 10 knot tailwind, you could, yeah, you could fly 40 miles an hour, 40 knots, and then when you turn around and come back, you're going 20. So you fly for 40 minutes one way, you turn around to come back, it's going to take you twice as long to get back. And if you're going in the morning and then the winds are picking up a little bit, maybe going even slower. have any more any other uh, powered parachute pilots around here I wish there were maybe if I get my CFI I can get a few around here to fly with I've got a couple guys that uh, have uh, PPGs but I don't really fly with them uh, actually the last time I was here I was here on a Monday or, uh, I came here on Saturday, and uh, the one guy took off, landed, <coughs> just left his engine idling and sucked the chute up in the prop. So his flight was real quick. And the other guy took off. And I thought, okay, uh, I like to let them take off and uh, see where they're going. Kind of stay a little bit away from him. Them. Uh, they don't have a lot of. They don't have any training. I think they just bought it and they're just trying it themselves. So I like to stay away from them when they're taking off and landing. He took off and he came down about five minutes later. I don't know what happened. He said his arms were tired. So with the PPGs, you're using your hands to steer. Here I'm using my feet. fields around here, a lot of horses. I never realized how many people had horses. Still, I started flying around here. Yeah, so we got a 10 knot headwind right now. But that's all right, as long as it's smooth, I don't mind going slow. You're not buying a pirate parachute to go fast. If I wanted to go fast, in an airplane. I'm not going to go over, uh, that was Bridgeton right in front of me, so it's a congested area. I'm going to stay away from uh, flying over the congested area. Just because I would have to go up a lot higher than I am, but then I'm to stay down a bit lower. <laughs> People around here have been really open to the power parachute just for the airports and you hear a lot of stories where airport managers don't want you flying in there and giving people a hard time, but they've really been very nice. I haven't had any issues. I think it's all about your approach when you're going to the airports also. Uh, I think the first time I came to Bucks, I, I just brought it. There was a breakfast. I brought the airwolf over so people could take a look at it. First thing people always say is, you got a hundred horsepower on that thing? So I got a tower right there so you need to stay far away from there. Got cables that run off the tower. Although that one I don't think does, but still. Uh, it's got a few. So yeah, between the horses, 
the towers. But I've got plenty of field. Really, South Jersey is loaded with, uh, in this particular area, you got a lot of soybean, corn and soybean. There's a Walmart straight ahead. hours I've got on this. 112 hours. I think my wife was hoping I'd get tired of flying this thing. Maybe uh, just the phase, you know, I went through the motorcycle phase, Corvette, boats. And she thought, oh, okay, you know, let him get this powered parachute. Maybe after six months he'd be tired of it. Nope. I went and got my private pilot in it. Really the only reason, well, a couple of reasons why I got my private in it. Uh, sometimes around here, especially in the evening, the weather's not good to fly at night until just about sunset. So with a being a light sport pilot, you have to be back down on the ground by civil twilight, which is about 25 minutes after sunset. So, you know, you do all this setting up and prep work for a 25 minute flight. And a lot of times if I could just have an hour, and really an hour after sunset, it's still, it's, you can see really well. Now you can't, log your nighttime flying until an hour after sunset. Uh, but I'll go up and uh, a couple times in the evening and fly to keep my takeoff and land number of takeoff and landings within 90 days current. I have yet to fly a passenger at night. Most people, I think I want them to fly during the day first, before I take them up at night. And I'm also uh, new to flying at night, although I've, I've got my private, but I'd rather get another, you know, just get more hours and more experience flying at night. Although I, I feel very comfortable. There's a few airports out here, uh, the private airports. I know, uh, know one of them. One of them, he doesn't have a problem with me landing. He's part of the EAA group. One thing that was really good for me after being a new pilot was joining the EAA. Uh, I really got to meet a lot of people. Even if they don't fly anymore, a lot of these people flew for a long time. They got a lot of knowledge. And I've spent a lot of time picking people's brains and trying to learn as much as I can. Either at the EAA groups or just at the airport. I'd enjoy going to the airport talking to other pilots. People have been flying a long time, longer than I've been alive. And I do think they enjoy the powered parachute because uh, it's so different than what they're used to seeing. And I've taken several of them up. Uh, one of them who's been flying for 50 years said to me, I've been flying around here my whole life and I've never seen it like this. Uh, probably the difference of 
being in a car going 80 miles an hour and then getting on your bike and take it going for a bike ride. You get to see everything, smell everything. It is neat being in the having the open air. Wow, I could I could really you really tell the temperature differences when you're flying uh, low and high and uh, this time of year around here we got lots of honeysuckles so I come down along the fields I'll see all the honeysuckles and smell them got a lot of solar panel fields out here now If you could see it in the diff distance, but there is a nuclear power plant way out there on the island. Uh, when people talk about it around here, they say, I work on the island. Wow, this is really smooth air. A lot of people don't like coming out early in the morning. And I tell them, if you want a nice, calm, smooth flight, you get out here at sunrise. So flying in the afternoon, you're gonna get lots of thermals. And it's not a real enjoyable flight. My legs get tired, I just put my legs out. If I need to steer a little bit, I'll just pull a little bit. It doesn't take much. This chute, uh, this is an Abco Cruiser 550. It doesn't take a lot of foot bar input. Lake that is. Hardly a lake, almost like a big stream. <sighs> I have my annual inspection next month, July. Be my second one. it with the uh, farmers they're all bailing their hay and it's a really uh, neat from the air seeing where all the hay bales are yeah, I didn't notice till I was flying at night but there's a lot of farmers they're out there late at night or at least past dark where we are at. Uh, so Bridgeton's south of us right now. Uh, right below us, these uh, sprinkler systems that pivot. It's neat from the air because you see all these little perfect circles. Can't really tell now, but and we still got about a ten knot headwind. I like to fly up here till about the. Uh, we get to a point where there's a the field stop for a while, and then it's just woods. 
like I said, people don't picture New Jersey looking like this. Oh, uh, there's the, uh, we're about ready to cross over the, uh, what's the name of this airport? Woodcrest Farms. So I know a few people that have their planes here. So this really isn't that far from Bucks. <laughs> but we go so slow, it takes a while. Yeah, this, this runway's got a little hump in the center of it. A little mini catapult. No, not quite a catapult. I tell my wife, if we buy another house, I want it to have a runway in the back. I think that's where Tom McDowell has his plane. I get a lot of cars that'll stop. There's a truck kind of straight down to the right a little bit. They stop and look. Probably thinking, what in the world is that thing? It's amazing how many people come back to the airport and they want to know what it is and how they can get one. The problem is right now you got to go to Florida, Georgia, New Hampshire. I don't know any. I don't know the closest one to New Jersey. And a lot of people just don't want to travel that far. Although, they're instructors, uh, the guy who instructed me, he will travel to you, train with you. But I do think there's just a lot of tire kickers. A lot of people say they want to do it, but then when it really gets down to it, they're not interested in really committing the time. Head back. So, see, we're up. I don't know if you can even tell, but we're moving a lot faster now. Went from 18 knots to 38 knots. What I found too is if I'm heading into the wind, I'm going pretty slow. Uh, I use a website called Brian Carlton that'll give me winds at different altitudes. But what I'll do is, you know, you try out some different altitudes and see if you can find it where the winds are a little calmer. Get you get a little bit more ground speed if you're heading into the wind. Really nice night. Curious to see how this audio works. 
wonder if it's going to get a lot of static from the wind. Like I said, this is probably more for me than for anyone else. I have a bad habit of knowing what I want to say or finding the right words to say it. I think what mistakes I made when I was first flying is that I would, in the, in the actual flying part, I would do too much. So, you know, I want to turn, I kind of would push it too far this way. The cart swings a little bit, and I'm trying to make it up this way. You just see that little bit, or that, where I'm pushing a little too hard. Okay, okay, I'm going a little bit. Just a small little input. Not swinging the cart around. This is a thousand feet. Especially coming in for landing, doing too much. Pushing and pushing and you're bouncing everything all over the place. Visibility in a powered parachute is great. I could really, I could turn and look both ways. Really good visibility around me, almost right behind me. traffic. I think that's down at the shore. I found a farmer stuck in the field. This field right below us, right in front of the nose. Got a low spot right in the middle of that field. Uh, this is one of my favorite things to do, and that's kind of fly the trees. Little turn, just get a good look. Sometimes I'll get there. I like that. I like the. from those horses. Woo! And hard turn to the right. There we go. Yeah, I picked up speed there. Picked up speed when I'm dropping. This is one of my favorite fields to fly in. And I love coming down right over the trees. There's a car. I'll let them look at it. Like I said, there are a lot of people, they They stop and look. Oh, we'll let them see what it is. What in the world is 
loves that thing. Greatest way to fly. Motorcycle in disguise. Actually, I think weight shift is probably the motorcycle in disguise. Maybe this is the moped in disguise. So around here, there's a lot of signs that was like, say no to the mining. And this is what they're talking about. I'll turn this way. Let's see. I guess they're mining sand. So South Jersey's full of sand. Yeah, let's turn you around. You get a good look at it. Uh, this is what everybody was protesting. They build up these walls right around it here. This is it right in front of us. They build up uh, tree, uh, trees and then walls. So you, from the road, you can't see it at all. how much cooler it is down here than it is let's see what what uh, altitude it warms up at this is 300 feet you can almost tell we're getting into the change so uh, it's pumping us around a little bit we have to get above it, it smooths out 400 feet so I tell people they're you know, flying them and we're going up and it's bumpy and they're like, oh, don't go up any higher. Well, if we go up higher, it'll actually be smoother. We're in that layer of it's mixing. Right here, it's starting to feel warm. So right there, smoothed out, 550 feet. get past the that mixing smooth right out and it's warmer uh, here goes a uh, shot of where the farmers bailed all the hay looks pretty neat from the air right here in front of us Two minutes. Time goes fast when you're having fun. Well, I know New Jersey's got high taxes and everybody complains, but it is a really nice area to live. We're close to cities, close to the shore. And it's here in South Jersey. It's really very uh, farmy and country. This is a tree, a Christmas tree farm right below us. Got a good shot. I'll, I'll come down. Here we come down. See all the little trees. There we go. So I, when I did my Santa flight. Uh, of course, this is I'm right back at the airport. Our uh, runway 18 is right there. We came in, we flew right over his tree farm, and he was advertising. Now, it wasn't me, but he was you know telling people, come by Christmas tree farm. Santa's gonna fly over. I did a uh, Santa flight where we went to different areas and flew down. I'll come down right over these trees. We came down and we uh, flew over different areas and had Santa waving at the kids. It was a lot of fun. And this was our last stop, of course, you see. There's a groundhog at 
He usually has his head popping out of the ground right about right at the runway. I like to scare him. Where's his hole? Right there. And this is runway 18. And nobody's still at the airport. So here are my landing. I could flare, 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 flare. Look at that. Look at that. Got speed down to 19. So I dropped it 10 knots just from that flare. I know I make a lot of videos and probably bores a lot of people. But every time I say, okay, I'm not going to make another video, I make another video. So this right here is a, uh, I'll, I'll turn around so you can see it. It's a uh, little airstrip for their remote control airplane. Some pretty neat planes here. I found two planes already out in fields and in trees. Right here below us, that's the uh, little airstrip. Got a tree right here. There's a crane over the other way. I'm going to go up and see what they're doing with that crane. A lot of freedom being able to fly over things. You're curious what's going on, you just fly. Yeah, fly over there, see what's happening. I bet you they're setting a house or something. that bumpy layer, 200 feet. And I'll build, I'll get some altitude because I don't want to fly right real low over the house. Layer, layer of cold air. Let's see if it's if it's going up or if it stayed the same. Last time it was 550 feet. And right now it's at 600. Well, let's see what the crane's doing. Yep, setting a modular. You know what? I'm supposed to be doing a modular. I wonder if this is it. I'm, they're setting it today. Wouldn't that be something else? Wouldn't that be something else? If that's my modular I'm supposed to be working on. See if I can find Joe's truck. <laughs> yep, that's Joe. That's that module I'm supposed to go to today. I'm going to send him a text. So yeah, go real careful with my head. Let's see. Uh, if I drop my phone here, it's goodbye phone. I think 
think I first flying I, I never take my phone out let's see who responds Woo. Oh, that was neat I was good I you know I was just getting ready to call him and say where's the house at All right George I found the house now he's gonna know if I'm supposed to go out there and work. <laughs> now he's gonna know, say, hey Aaron, I thought you said you were gonna be here. Uh oh, I see you flying around. them oh that was neat you know I in his text he told me he said once you come down and start the heating well I guess to play hard you gotta work hard hey you got to get the house on the foundation before I can put the heating system in uh, before I put it away for the day why don't we fly low over some trees again Now, I told Joe that I said, I'll take you up, but the last time he was up in a plane, he threw up. Uh, maybe I will take you up. Nice tree. So really, if there's a problem, I lose power, I just go like this. Just like that. This is a spot right here where I saw one of their remote control planes up in the trees. There's no way I was getting it. Alright, let's bring her in. Get a look at the windsock. See where our winds are at. Not really. I hate to waste a calm day. feel those mechanical rotors coming off those trees. Well, I can. I don't know if you can tell it bouncing around. Uh, we'll come in this way. Like, I could land... The, the wind's hardly anything here, and I could land the other way. It's just... Uh, <clears throat> what'll happen is, it, you know, I want the chute to lay behind me real nice. If I land and the wind pushes it over, it'll... Oh dear. Is that a groundhog? No. 
I almost thought it was a groundhog. I was going to get it. Uh, just to have the chute lay really nice. Let's see how long our flight was. An hour. That was good. Unless we want to stay up longer. And gentle, gentle. Woo Power off. Now let's pull that back. Get that wig to drop nice behind us. <laughs> and that's it. Fun, fun, fun. Uh.